nobody got time for that. So the next gen wars are in full swing. The new hardware will be dropping next month, and we already have fanboys declaring their side the winner, even without getting their hands on the hardware. But the thing is, Sony has been fighting the wrong war for this generation. While Sony has been focusing solely on the console war, Microsoft and other companies are moving on to a new advanced battlefield of next-gen gaming wars. Microsoft's realization of the changing battlefield will make them the winner of the next-gen gaming war. And that's all thanks to the exosystem that Microsoft has created. Grab your favorite beverage and get some drinks. The arcade is over. So, have you been on Twitter in the past few years? Then you've seen the next gen wars being fought out by proxy by both sides fanboys. But, if you were lucky enough to avoid it, well, I'll be happy enough to recap it for you. Microsoft makes an announcement. Sony fanboys come running. And they attack. Wait, there's more. Sony makes an announcement. Xbox fanboys rally. And you guessed it, they attack. This could be fine but they have not even had a chance to go hands-on with the hardware. And they really don't make that great of an argument. Comments like, Sony's gonna win because Xbox is trash. And Sony likes unicorn poop. They do nothing for the conversation. But the really sad part is, they drown out those with legitimate input for the hardware or the companies. If I'm going to keep it at 100 with you, it looks something like this. I'm no better. As the title says, Xbox wins next gen war. And I have not laid hands on the console either. And I don't need to. It's not the console itself that's going to win it for them. Let's be 100 here. Sony's going to win the console exclusive category, hands down with PS5. Okay. Not shabby at all. So what does the Xbox Series 1XS exclusives look like? Okay, that didn't really help with my argument. But, it is facts. So, let's look into the specs. Maybe that will help a little. It's really hard to dig into this one. Without having hands-on with consoles, we have to rely on spec sheets. Now, some YouTubers have had a chance to experience the Series X and S. Mm, we have not, but... Hey Phil, uh, if you want to send one our way, I'll give you them digits. Uh, but anyways, back on top. Videos are coming out now doing speed tests on the X and S, and they're pretty impressive. The PlayStation on the other hand, well, we really don't know. At time of this recording, I only know a few units over in Japan and Europe, but not much info. So to make this section feel more fleshed out, here are some specs you've seen countless times. And you'll see here guys, there's a lot of numbers up here, and a lot of words, and I don't even know what half of them means if I'm going to be honest with you. I know what a USB is, and don't know what teraflops are, but I guess they're important. So if you really want to go ahead and look over, go ahead and hit the pulse. Honestly. Both systems seem solid, and I think gamers will be happy with the performance of whichever console they decide to go with. But it's time we look at the real difference between Sony and Microsoft, their ecosystems. This is what will win the next gen game wars for Microsoft. Yes, I said next gen game wars, and not the next gen console wars. While Sony was preparing to fight the standard console war, Microsoft realized that gaming was evolving, and so must the battle. 
They changed the way battle was fought. Microsoft redistributed resources, acquired new resources, and planned for the future of gaming. So let's break down what I like to call the Exosystem. The first part of the Exosystem is Game Pass. There's three different tiers of it. You have your Game Pass Ultimate, well, to your basic one. You'll be looking at $14.99 to $9.99. You'll have access to over 100 games at a time that will be available on console, PC, and Android mobile devices. New games are added all the time, and Xbox Game Studio titles will be released to Game Pass the same day. Also, exclusive member discounts and deals, such as right now, I think you can get a Nitro Server Boost for three months and Spotify Premium for six months. You'll be able to get free perks including in-game content and partnered offers. You can play games on your Android and mobile phone and tablet through the cloud. This also includes gold, and EA Play. With Gold, you'll get normally four games a month, and then with EA Play, you'll have access to a lot of EA titles, and you'll get to play the new releases at a time trial to see if you want to buy them, all included in your monthly subscription. The next part of the Exosystem is Project X Cloud. You'll be able to play over 100 games on your Android mobile phone or tablet from the cloud with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Project X Cloud can already stream over 3,500 games. At the moment, X Cloud is only available on Android devices, but Microsoft is still committed to bringing the service to iPhone owners. I've personally tried this in the beta testing and I've had zero issues with it. The only lag I've ever experienced was when I was trying to play Arc, but the servers aren't really that great for Arc, so. Meh. Okay. So I'm going to get kind of personal in this section. When I talk about accessibility, I'm not talking about price. I'm talking about the accessibility for gamers to access gaming, especially those that suffer from physical and mental roadblocks that create a wall to gaming. Microsoft has shown in the past its desire to help make gaming more accessible. Remember the adaptive controller? This controller has opened up gaming for a lot of people. I personally want to get my hands on one and to take it to the local VA down the road for me after the Rona restrictions go away. You see, I firsthand know how gaming can help people cope and rehabilitate. A few years back, I was inspecting my jet, did my best Humpty impression, no, not the dance. I fell from the top. Luckily, my head cushioned the impact to the hangar floor so it wasn't damaged. I ended up losing 25% of my vision impairment to my fine motor skills, and other issues related to the TBI. Basically, I need a lot of cognitive and vestibular rehab. My referral doctors just happened to be starting a clinical research project to see if video games, specifically luminosity, could aid recovery and normalization in TBI patients. My doctors decided that I need to go to Walter Reed Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland, same place that President Trump was uh, taken to recently for a special head injury program for the military called NICO. I know it seems like I'm going off topic, but just hang in there. Heck, you can blame it on the brain damage if you want. Here I learned how video games could help heal me mentally and physically. It helped, and it still does recover hand-eye coordination, task tracking, and critical thinking. But mostly, it taught me how gaming can be a therapeutic escape and allowed for decompression from outside factors. This is where the cloud gaming component of the Exosystem comes into play. About a year ago, I came across an organization called Gamers Outreach. They build go-karts for kids that can't make use of the rec rooms at hospitals, either due to immune issues or physical limitations. And now with the Rona, well, that's probably every kid. You see, these gaming carts give these children a chance to escape from the horrible things that they are dealing with that no kid should. The cost of these go-karts are around 3.5k a piece. Gamers Outreach mostly relies on streamers hosting charity streams to raise the money for these carts, along with special events thrown in. And I also need to acknowledge Tiny Build right now. Earlier in the year, during the charity drive, we worked with Tiny Build to secure over 500 copies of speedrunners to be installed on all current and future go-karts. I personally love seeing the gaming industry support gamers, and I think it should be shared. That's all. Night.
let's get back on track. With the new EXO system, gamers' outreach could drastically lower the cost of each cart by only requiring a tablet, Bluetooth controller, and a sub to Game Pass. This combination would produce a smaller physical footprint, allowing for easier transit between patients, easier sanitation from the smaller surface area, as well as being able to fit into a crowded room. Not to mention the lower power consumption rate. This is what I mean by accessibility. The exosystem is morphable to fit the gamer's needs and limitations. By the way, Phil, if you are by some chance watching this, or maybe someone mentions this opportunity to you about how the exosystem could lower the cost of go-karts, eh, maybe it's worth checking out, good sir. Just saying. The next area of the exosystem I want to look at is the exosystem exclusives. This is where we kind of touch back on that console exclusive section from earlier. Microsoft has purchased a few studios if you have not noticed. The biggest being Zenimax Studios, the parents of studios like Bethesda. This has made Microsoft the owners of franchises like Fallout, Skyrim, and Starfield. The simple truth is, Microsoft will have exclusives to the exosystem and not the Xbox Series X or S consoles. If you already have a PC and an Android device, or this gen's Xbox, you're already ready to play. Listen, I know that people are upset about this, and they will say things like, screw Bethesda, Fallout 76 was a buggy mess. Well, yes, Fallout 76 was a mess. It's getting better, but that does not negate what happened at launch. But fans will come back. They always do. I mean, look at all those people who turned on Blizzard. And I think they've forgotten about why they were angry in the first place. Pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows. Pink fluffy Well, there goes that uh, review copy of Diablo 4 I was hoping for. The Exosystem is going to become the home for Western RPGs. Think about it. Skyrim 6, Starfield, Future Fallouts, Outer World 2, and the new Fable. All these titles will be available day one on Game Pass Ultimate for console, PC, and Android devices, all thanks to the Exosystem. When we talk about family values, I'm not talking about instilling integrity, service, and excellence, even though those are great core values. I'm talking about the monetary value it brings to them. Okay, so I'm not a pro gamer, I'm not a Twitch partner, nor am I a YouTube star. I am a veteran, a gamer owner of a failed gaming website, a husband to an amazing woman, but more importantly, I'm a dad. I have two wonderful goblins, and one of them is at the age where she's really getting into gaming. Gaming is expensive nowadays, even more so if you have kid gamers, but recent events such as Rona has made it even a bigger burden on families this year. The shutdowns have limited the income that most people would be putting towards their next console purchase, and redirecting those funds to care for normal household requirements. It's important to realize that the people that will be making these next-gen console purchases are mainly parents. Most parents are going to be forced to look at the best value, and yes, in years prior, a lot of kids could dictate what system they were going to get. But 2020, it's a different beast. Those parents can still afford to shell out cash, will do so with their wallets in mind and the exosystem provides that value parents will be looking for. First, Microsoft has made sure that all the current gen peripherals work on the next gen system. This means my old controllers will work on the Xbox One, Series X, and S, so I won't need to buy new controllers. And even if you don't have a family of gamers, you know you need more than one controller. Sony chose not to do such a thing, instead locking the console to their new controller and its feedback function. Paying $70 for games is going to suck. The Exosystem cuts that price tag for first party games and over 100 other titles, all for a small monthly fee. I'm able to explore titles that I'm not sold on yet without paying that high sticker price. My daughter can scroll through Game Pass and try any game she wants. If it's too difficult for her, no loss to my wallet. If she plays 5 minutes and gets bored with it, yeah, still no loss to my wallet. Think of it this way. If you average a yearly purchase of two titles at $70 a pop, that'd be $140. Now, I'm not good at math, and I'll take the easy way out and blame it on the TBI. Just don't ask my freshman math teacher, because she'll disagree. But 
you would have already paid more than what your yearly sub to Game Pass would have cost you. The Exo system provides pricing flexibility to let gamers jump into gaming at different price points. For example, your kids want to get into gaming. They want to play the same games as their friends, but you can't swing the price of a new next-gen console. If you already have a PC, you can purchase Game Pass and start experiencing and playing the Exo system without dropping $500 or $300 for a next-gen console. Even cheaper? Okay. Does your kid have an Android tablet? Purchase Game Pass and your child can be gaming with their friends via xCloud. No console needed. The Exo system brings the price point to entry-level gaming down to a price point we have never seen before. Okay, I've rambled long enough. I'm not a fanboy for either company. If I was, I would have talked up the consoles themselves. Truth is, don't know who has the better console. So I have to base my opinion off facts. And the fact is, consoles are moving to the direction of becoming just another peripheral, a very expensive peripheral. Microsoft had the insight to realize this. They saw streaming and service-based subscription success in other markets and understood this move was the next logical step in the evolution of gaming. And even if you hate it, as I was against it at first, gaming is going to move to this type of platform. So Microsoft made sure to offer true value and flexibility within the exosystem. They're making themselves the home of Western RPGs, building a first party studio like no one thought they could. They have a chance to use the exosystem to help gamers with disabilities and they can open a world of gaming to those families who cannot access or afford it. I'll end up owning both consoles. I have a passion for gaming. Unless something goes horribly wrong with the PS5, but I don't see that happening. I think the PS5 will be amazing. But sadly, gaming is moving on. Microsoft knew this. I have come to accept it, and Sony is still hesitating. This is why the next-gen console wars are dead and the next-gen gaming wars are the new battlefield, and Microsoft nuked it with the XO system. And gamers are the winner. Thank you for watching. I'll leave links in below if you would like to learn more about Gamers Outreach or the NICO Clinic. Both are great causes. One helps six kid gamers, and the other helps service members recover from traumatic brain injuries. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, hit the sub button or the like one so I know if I should make more of these animated shows. It's hard work. I'll put a link below so you can see some behind the scenes stuff, maybe storyboards or some draft scripts. If we can hit 50 subs, I'll be extremely happy because we'll be able to get a custom URL for the channel. But don't forget, you can catch us over on Twitch where we do our live streams, do a lot of our plays there and everything for new games that we're testing out. But guys and gals, have a great day. And just remember, game on. There's a fire in your cage. It's never going out. A cold war never ending. The world casting down. Just remember, I'll be easy on the way it fails. Cause you lit the place on fire, but you never burn it down. Now I'm alone